what was different in the second half as opposed to the first half? Well, I, I don't uh, credit to them. Uh, if you've watched their games, uh, they've gotten behind to almost every team, even their exhibition games uh east central had them by 14 even into the second half but they came out and attacked us they were in attack mode their pressure was uh, you know really good i you know they it, it disrupted us and um yeah i guess sometimes halftime you take a deep breath figure it out and then we just attack them i you know the points in the paint second half if they're going to pressure us and we just said we got to go at the hoop uh, i didn't think we went at the hoop in the first half we settled to 0 for 10 for three in that first half, um, settled with some empty possessions, uh, and, and then hopefully, you know, took care of the ball a little bit better in the second half. I, and we told the players uh, transition and second chance points would be the difference in the game. And uh, we were able to match them points off turnovers. We were, you know, out got the points in the paint, mainly second half, fast break points is nine to eight. But the second chance, and I think two or three of them were off of free throws, 16 to 8. You look at it, that's the game. That and a couple little plays, finish a layup, uh, you know, make another open three somewhere down the line that uh, could have given us a given us a little better chance. But, uh, you know, we knew they were going to be good. We knew it would not be easy. Now you got to move forward and you got another very, very good team in Illinois tomorrow. Uh, Bruce, I guess, is it a good thing that you're going to be playing your, your old team, Illinois, here on just a, a short rest so nobody really has time to think about it? Anything else that might go along with it? I, You know, it's for the players, they don't know or care. I mean, they just know it's a, a – right now they're rated in the top 20, and, and it's a, a challenge. They got a really good big guy, and we got to go back to that hotel, get something to eat, get hydrated, get some rest – and then, you know, see what we can do tomorrow. Uh, the, the mental part of it now, this is about mental toughness. They got their butts kicked. You know, they're going to come ready to play. Um, you know, we had a hard fought game uh, against a very good team. Uh, now can we come back and, and play with that same intensity and be a little better, a little better execution, uh, get some more assists, uh, get some, a few more stops and, and, and be able to stop them and, and move forward as a team. And what, was there anything from your vantage point you could see that led to the missed threes in the first half? Nerves, just needed better shot selection? What did you think? I, you know, I think a, a couple of them were rushed. Uh, they closed out on us on some. Um, and then when you don't have that rhythm, then the ones you – we had a few – I'd say we had three or four open ones that we didn't make. Even, even Nigel down the stretch out of timeout, we ran that little corner play for him. And uh, he had a pretty good look, you know, it just, uh, you know, it, again, they're, they shoot three for 22 also. It's kind of ironic, uh, real intense game, uh, very physical game. And uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to play that way and shoot the ball relax like you need to. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Guys, I'm actually having computer issues, so if you have a question for Coach, feel free to jump in. Hey, Coach, Brian, go ahead. You guys, you guys um, went with a five-guard lineup at times tonight. What went into that decision? Well, we, we, we thought that it would allow us to spread the court a little more and get to the hoop, and that's, that was the whole goal of that. Uh, we knew somewhere along the line, because they play small ball also, that Ish would have, probably have to play some five. Um, you know, it, you got to give them credit. Uh, Connor Vanover, I, I thought he was a really key for them in the first half. Ends up 14 points, five rebounds, just uh, very, very efficient, plus nine on the plus minus. So uh, they're, you know, that he definitely got the advantage, uh, you know, over our bigs. But, you know, the whole thing was to spread them a little bit, you know, get the court, take advantage, take, I guess, advantage of their pressure and get to the basket. Which, which we did, you know, we end up out first half. I don't know what the points of the paint were, but I thought they were kind of dominating that in the second half. Um, you know, we had a lot more points in the paint. Yeah, uh, Coach Weber, how, um, how key was Selton when it came to, you know, getting the offense going, going to the hoop, and also adding intensity to the defense? Well, you know, he, 
uh, he's grown as a player. Uh, the biggest thing he's grown is rebounding. A year ago at Christmas, I asked him if he'd ever get a rebound with, during his career, and now he has nine. He's, uh, he could be – him and Mark are two leading rebounders. So, um, you know, he's playing more physical. Uh, you know, he can get to the basket, playing playing just a little more confidence. And and he, he got us going, at, you know, and we tried to get him some – uh, opportunities get downhill with some actions uh, and he took advantage of it uh, you know so that it you know now we need everyone to if we're going to win and be make progress as a team we got to get more consistency out of everybody coach last year uh, you know in the middle of the season there were some pretty tough losses for you guys early on in the or I guess at halftime um, you had that 18 point deficit just what does it mean for your team to be able to fight back in the second half? And what improvement have you seen in that front? Well, I, you know, just the, the, we're a year older. We've added players that are more experienced. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's just, just part of the process. Uh, as you saw the process last year during the year, got to give them a lot of credit. When you when have, it, was it was the, the worst, worst case scenario. scenario. When you, you have COVID, COVID and you have, you have a young team and you don't have practice, it's hard to compete. And, uh, you, know, you know, we did uh, make progress last year. Uh, you know, they, they, they slapped us at the beginning, not literally physical, but they took, they took it to us in the first half. And we got off the mat and, and we went back at that. Is there any other questions for uh, Coach Weber? Uh, Ryan Black. Hey, uh, Bruce, I asked Nigel about this, but just, you know, how, how crushing was that when you guys are trying to make this comeback and you're trying to get the ball out of Likes' hands and he ends up making all 10 of these free throws in the final two minutes? You know, that was at the end. We just said double him and make somebody else bring it up, but that's easier said than done. He is very, very quick. Uh, you know, he was the one that, uh, you know, got the ball and, and you know, he – you got to give him credit. We put a lot of pressure on him and put him in some tough situations, and he was able to keep his poise. I, he might have lost it one time, but uh, uh, several other times we had no choice but then just to follow. Thank you, Bruce. Um, you know, to the point that in the store, uh, There's no other questions for Coach. Uh, Coach, we appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Tim.